welcome back to the series in which I swatch all the core colors and in today's episode we're going to be looking at the two whites and the three sparkly colors. In this video we have the titanium white made with PW6, Chinese white made with PW4, iridescent gold fine made with titanium dioxide coated in mica, iridescent pearl fine made with titanium dioxide coated mica and iridescent silver fine again made with titanium dioxide coated mica. First up we have the titanium white and let's just bring the Chinese white together in this because I think what we're most interested in is how these two compare with each other. I have black paper here and here to help us with seeing how opaque it is but I think where you can tell the difference the most is here on the black strip and I would say the titanium white is much more opaque than Chinese white. It is however it doesn't go as evenly to me than the Chinese white does so it just depends on what you're looking for. If you're looking for not too much coverage but smooth going down pick the Chinese white. If you want the maximum coverage then go for titanium white. It on both of these, for some reason, it's very, very subtle, but there is a sparkle to it. And I double check the paper. The paper doesn't have the sparkle. And when I painted this, I made sure that I didn't have a single bit of these paints in the water jar that could transfer onto here. I had a brand new clear water. I always do this for the white colors swatches it, again i changed the water nice clean water so the sparkles i would have to assume is in the titanium white now and the chinese white it basically in the paints themselves now i'm not saying it's gonna your paint's gonna look like this it's not it's very very subtle amount but it is slightly sparkly which i kind of like it's it's quite nice and um, you just kind of got to catch the light. You see it a lot more washed down. But yeah, it's, it's got a tiny, tiny bit of sparkle. So this is more opaque. This is less opaque. In terms of tinting strengths, the Chinese white is definitely lower in tinting strengths than the titanium white. You can see that this is almost transparent in how it went down, whereas this is more chalky. So it's the typical go for titanium white if you want more chalky pay more opaque coverage and go for chinese white if you want a less coverage but goes down smooth since we're doing these both at the same time we'll do this at the same time so titanium white obviously is made with pw6 which is the titanium white and chinese white has pw4 which is zinc oxide white in terms of dispersion, you can't really see it because it's white. Um, I really can't. <laughs> I can't really see. So, yeah. Next up, we have the iridescent gold. And I kind of struggled with this paper. But by the way, this paper isn't watercolor paper. It was just like the only piece of black paper that I had. So I'm not expecting these to behave quite so well so i apologize for this not being watercolor paper it was just it's just there to see how opaque it is and see how it looks on darker paper and it is a semi opaque color it depends on the light in some light it looks more transparent and obviously when it's like reflecting the light then it looks more opaque is what I would say. So somewhere between semi-transparent and semi-opaque. It's it won't qualify on you or anything like that. It's granulating in that the micas are quite large particles, so you're gonna see the grain. It's classified as non-staining, and I would agree with that. Because it's non-staining though, glazing is a nightmare. So try to avoid it and try to get it down in one layer. If you have to do it in two, be quick about it. But where this color shines the most is in the color mixes. And I adore, adore these. 
color mixes, especially in the Queen Rose and the Sailor Blue. It creates this gorgeous shimmer, soft. If you're into painting lots of mystical, magical stuff, or just even like a spring kind of feeling, I would say that these two are just absolutely spot on. This color is definitely worth doing more color mixes testing with other colors because I think you're going to have such beautiful effects with this. It's just so pretty. It is low in tinting strength, so, so you're only going to get this soft kind of look to it, but it's just gorgeous. It's dispersion, I would say. It disperses to the middle, but I can definitely see a, one little strand of haloing happening here. See, let's see if I can get it caught in the camera just here. Can you see that? So not a huge amount of dispersion and definitely not much in haloing. I think this color really shines when you mix it with other colors though. So pretty. I, I could stare at that for ages so nice then we have the iridescent pearl and again i'm going to bring in the iridescent silver because i think what you guys will be most interested in is the difference between the two and how would you pick between iridescent pearl and iridescent silver so iridescent pearl is much whiter shimmer and the iridescent silver is like a cooler shimmer and i would say that there's not huge difference between the two on the dark paper. There's more noticeable difference in color when you paint over white paper. So I would probably pick either of these colors depending on what color I want it on the white paper. And if I've only got one of these colors, but I'm painting on black paper, then I wouldn't worry too much about it. It looks pretty similar. There's a tiny little bit of difference in that this is a tiny bit more blue. This I'm talking about this in with the naked eye rather than what it shows up on the camera. It, there might be a more significant difference in hue on camera, but naked eye with studio light on, just slightly, slightly bluer. But honestly, I wouldn't be bothered which one I'm using if it's on dark paper in terms of opacity this one's classified as semi-transparent this one's classified as semi-opaque and i would say that they're both semi-opaque on over black line but yeah if i squint this is a tiny bit more opaque than this one in terms of staining they're both non-staining which means they're gonna lift quite a lot and the only reason why this doesn't have the bad written on it is because it's on white on white so you can't really see it but they're both going to be a struggle if you are trying to glaze in terms of color mixes they are both low intent however i am noticing that this one the iridescent pearl has more noticeable shine of that white than the iridescent silver has can you see that on camera so if you are doing a lot of color mixes with these iridescent colors and you want them to show then i would pick the iridescent pearl over the iridescent silver in terms of dispersion iridescent silver can you see yeah it, it is showing in the camera this only tiny bit of dispersion whereas the iridescent silver it spreads out a little bit more so if you want a wilder time then i recommend the iridescent silver so that's it for the white colors and the sparkle colors of the core series what did you think of it which one was your favorite is there a color that you would like to particularly go for for me personally is the iridescent gold just how gorgeous are these color mixes i think they are absolutely beautiful now we have swatched all the core colors, but this isn't the last episode in the core series. We actually, I have planned three more episodes. Next one is gonna be the dispersion comparison so that you have one video where it shows you all the different dispersions of different colors. Then I'm gonna show you the color wheel palette that I would pick from core because not every brand can 
create a color wheel palette all on itself, but cause colors can. I've tested them. I've been swatching and color mixing for days and they have, I can create a color wheel palette with just core. In the final episode, I'm going to give you some tips on how to pick the right colors for your palette and for what you do from the core colors. So I'm hoping that these three episodes will really help you in picking the right colors for you if you are struggling with too much choice syndrome. So please do look forward to that. Um, I've got lots of exciting charts and color tables and stuff happening that was so much fun to paint. Thank you so much to Quart again for supplying me with all these amazing paints, which allows me to share these paints with you guys. So huge thanks. Massive thanks to you guys for getting through 16 episodes of swatching. Please hang in there for three more episodes. I would really, really appreciate it. I think it's going to be three good episodes and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.